Fair, balanced, open-minded journalism with consideration for the spiritual in these uncertain times. Is it the end of time or is this the end of times? National takedown operation. Our efforts represent a continuation of the department's ongoing work to combat the devastating effects of healthcare fraud and opioid abuse around the country. And while this effort has been led by our criminal division fraud sections healthcare fraud unit, it truly reflects a nationwide effort. With the department bringing cases in more than 50 separate federal districts and participation by over 40 U.S. attorneys' offices around the country. These cases involve charges against a wide variety of people, with charges brought against more than 100 licensed medical professionals, including more than 50 doctors and more than 20 healthcare executives. These cases also cover a wide variety of alleged healthcare fraud and illegal prescription opioid schemes. Some of these schemes, unfortunately, are all too familiar to us from our work over the last several years. These include schemes with defendants who allegedly billed for millions of dollars of products that, or services that they simply never delivered, or where defendants allegedly prescribed and billed for medically unnecessary treatments and medication, including, as I mentioned before, powerfully addictive and potentially destructive opioids. These cases also represent a number of new schemes that we are charging for the first time. These schemes reflect what we believe to be harm harmful trends that appear to be emerging in healthcare fraud. We are tracking these new trends and responding aggressively, as today's announcement and operations demonstrate. These cases, of course, are only the latest in the department's years-long effort to safeguard the nation's healthcare programs from fraud and abuse. For example, since 2017 alone, the Criminal Division's Fraud Section has charged more than 1,000 individuals with more than $10 billion in healthcare fraud, including fraud related to the abuse of prescription opioids. Preventing and imposing accountability for healthcare fraud has never been of more critical importance than it is today. And these prosecutions once again show the Criminal Division and its partners efficiently and effectively striking at those who would abuse America's healthcare programs. Now I'd like to take a moment to speak briefly about the types of alleged criminal scheme charged in this takedown. The largest amount of fraud charged in the cases announced today, representing more than $4.5 billion of alleged fraud, relates to telemedicine. That is, the use of telecommunications technology like the phone or the internet to provide healthcare services remotely rather than in person. That ability to provide healthcare remotely is a critical tool for those who might be homebound in remote areas or otherwise unable to visit their healthcare provider in person. And telemedicine has proven all the more critical during this national crisis when so many Americans are isolating, quarantining, or otherwise restricting their face-to-face -face interactions. However, a number of the cases we are announcing today show that for all of its benefits, telemedicine, unfortunately, can also be exploited by criminal actors. For example, in a case charged in the District of New Jersey, a group of defendants allegedly submitted over $522 million of false and fraudulent bills for genetic testing to Medicare as part of a telemedicine scheme that involved patients in all 50 states, the District of Columbia, and the Virgin Islands. We are also announcing today charges brought in the Northern District of Illinois against the doctor who is alleged to have been the highest prescriber of genetic testing in the entire country. The largest such case to date involving $145 million in alleged fraud losses. As I said earlier, telemedicine offers great promise to Americans, especially during this difficult time of national crisis. And we at the department remain committed to ensuring that this valuable tool, with all its promise, is not undermined by fraud 
and abuse. Another sizable amount of fraud that we are announcing today, nearly $850 million worth, relates to doctors and others who allegedly defrauded insurance providers and their own patients in connection with residential substance abuse treatment centers, or so-called sober homes. These are facilities that are supposed to provide life-saving care and treatment to some of the most vulnerable among us, those battling addiction. But unfortunately, there are those who would prey on these individuals, these vulnerable individuals, and illegally seek to exploit the system for their own financial benefit. For example, we have charged 10 defendants, including a CEO, two clinic owners, and three doctors, in connection with a $91 million fraud scheme involving inpatient and outpatient addiction treatment centers in Broward County, Florida. Now, this case comes on the heels of charging this summer, also in South Florida, the largest ever sober homes fraud case involving over $680 million in alleged loss. Now, these sober home cases are particularly egregious, not just because of the sub substantial amounts of financial fraud and loss that they involve, but also because of the significant harm that they can cause to patients who are used and abused along the way. In many of these cases, defendants are alleged to have preyed upon addicted patients, recruiting them from their hometowns where they have support networks, and shipping them off to faraway states where they are placed into these so-called sober homes. Once there, these vulnerable individuals are often provided with drugs that undercut their ability to recover from, the addi from addiction, and they are often shuffled from facility to facility to boost headcount and maximize billing, instead of being given the addiction treatment care that they so desperately need. In some of our more troubling cases, and as alleged in the relevant charging documents announced in connection with the cases today, some patients also are referred out to other healthcare providers who bill for additional medically unnecessary tests, medications, and services. Other co-conspirators then provide kickbacks in return for access to these vulnerable patients. This fraud and abuse 